12. Um, I'm up. Um, my mom came in and gave me pain medication earlier. And, uh, it actually didn't do anything. Um, I, I don't know why. Um, because I feel pretty bad right now. But, um, I'm gonna go down and get my cold brew coffee. And, uh, Hopefully play with the Rosie for a little bit. So, good morning. So it got all nice and frothy. Has matcha, my cold brew coffee, and maple syrup, which is a natural sugar. You can like barely taste the matcha. The hazelnut in the coffee kind of drowns out the matcha. So definitely a good um, drink to start the day out. Hey guys, so I'm about to leave to go to my grandma's and um, I just figured I'd do a quick story time. Something came up today. Um, and so I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. Nothing, it's, it's very serious, but it, hopefully it wouldn't be triggering if um, it is, then skip ahead probably five minutes. I'm talking about 9-11. Um, so both my parents happen to be in the city. We live like 20 or 30 minutes out of New York City. We're really, really, really close. We're on the border of Queens actually. Um, and so my dad works in New York City and my mom was in New York City because she had um, a doctor's appointment somewhere. It was, it was uh, more uptown, I think. I don't think she was close. But for whatever reason, um, my dad was like, pretty much passing the World Trade Center. He was like a block down or something. And he said that the, um, you know, they just heard like, obviously the airplane was so low and they just heard the like, the g like gushing like uh, wind sounds from the World Trade Center. And he said that like in New York City, if you've ever been, people don't stop moving. People are constantly like, on top of it, moving, moving, like, it's hard. It's hard to get around New York City. He said everybody was standing perfectly still with their head up looking at the, um, looking at the plane. And everybody that was around him um, just, like, just watched the plane hit the tower. Like, just right there. My dad was, again, only, like, two blocks away. And um, he said that nobody, like, knew what to do. Everybody was just kind of, like you know, what the hell happened, what's going on, because you never expect that to happen. Um, and so basically he saw the first plane hit and then he ended up, I think, leaving. And then he saw, I don't think he saw the second plane hit, my mom did, because they were talking about 9-11, the first plane hit. So my mom went outside and um, she was further away though and she saw this uh, the second plane hit. And then I think one of my I think my dad maybe, they ended up finding each other, which is crazy because it was 2002, you know, I was seven years old. Um, cell phones weren't really that anything. And the cell phone service went down big time. No subways, no public transit, like pretty much the city was on lock, lockdown. I do not know how my parents found each other, but they did. And um, they ended up coming home later that night. One of my dad's brothers uh, lives in Connecticut and him and his wife were um, supposed to be leaving from either LaGuardia, which is in Queens, and JFK, which is actually also in Queens. And um, they couldn't because obviously all the flights were shut down completely, so they had to stay in our basement overnight because um, they weren't going to go back home. And um, I just remember sitting at this table, actually, and I was sitting where the, ca the camera is kind of positioned at and my grandma was sitting at the, the chair that's like right across from me right now and um, she picked us or she her and my sister picked because um, she, she was three or almost three and she picked me up from school and like obviously I was seven years old I'm not going to really com like comprehend what's going on but I have such a distinct memory of um, my grandma sitting in the chair and we're, <laughs> we're watching like the video of both of them just like you know, smoke coming out of both of them, like, before they fell and everything. I just remember my grandma sitting here, like, 
oh my god, oh my god, just over and over. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm never going to remember, I'm never going to forget that. But my parents found, found themselves, or found each other, and they somehow got home. And then the only other thing I really remember is the next day, um, we were in school, you know, elementary school, and we were all sitting together, and the, um, we had a social worker coming in, and the teacher, we were all sitting and talking for a while about um, everything that happened. A lot of people had family that were first responders, and so many people in my area went in and have died. Um, my sister's one of her best friends, his dad, or her dad dies, died, excuse me, died three years ago because of, um, he had, I think he had lung cancer. They didn't wear masks cor correctly while they were like looking through debris and everything. Um, a family friend sort of that lives across the street was just telling us, um, he was like high up, um, at the NYPD, so he was in charge of actually the morgue. Um, he was doing missing, missing persons and stuff like that. So he actually told my family that my dad, um, because he was south of Canal Street when it happened, um, he can just automatically get um, free health insurance for the rest of his life. So we're going to look into that for him. But um, totally, totally, totally um, something I'll never forget. and. So many people now are getting cancer out here, and it's it like my area of Long Island, the western end of Long Island, is still like we're still reeling over it. It's really it's pretty bad still, and we have pieces of um, of the steel, you know, up at memorials for like in our town. Like I could get there and like <laughs> you know I could walk there in like a half an hour and see the you know. It hit us really, really hard, and it's still hitting us. So many people are dying of cancer now, you know, and this is however, what, almost 17 years later. So, anyway, that's my story time. I'm sorry it was a little bit, like, depressing, but I did want to talk about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go get my stuff together and go to my grandma's. So, I just got back from my grandma's. I actually gave her a sponge bath um, sounds gross but whatever she's my grandma as long as she doesn't feel self-conscious about me seeing her without clothes on I don't care and Rosie loves to play She's playing with me. My mom is trying to find her mice. Hi. Come here, Rosie. to do potentially the worst decision ever. I want to do my turmeric and I don't want to open the unopened milk and we have unsweetened almond milk. So I'm wondering if I mix the chai turmeric with the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I'm scared of how that's going to Maybe I should just open the um, whole milk. I'm just gonna open the whole milk. Um, we stopped at the cutest little coffee place, and um, I got a chai latte that I haven't finished yet. And basically, my plan for that is to drink my turmeric, and because I don't really like the taste all that much, I'm going to heat up my chai latte when I'm done as a reward for doing my turmeric, so that's my plan. We went out to have food, just in too much pain. I literally took two bites, couldn't eat it. And so I'm gonna be taking my pain medicine, yeah, my pain medicine soon. So I'm gonna wait like 45 minutes to an hour and then try to eat again to see if it helps. Um, but I'm going to make my turmeric and with whole milk, whole milk 
and I will um, see you guys on the other side. <laughs> Stupid tickets. Because they're really expensive. What? I said they're really expensive.